All right, today we are going to read this book called Family Reunion, and it is written by Bonnie Bader and illustrated by Myrnie Gallagher Cole. Family Reunion. Family Reunion. Time to get up, my mom called. I looked at the clock. It read seven o'clock. There must be some mistake, I thought. It was Saturday morning. I had no school today. Come on, Gary, mom said. I turned over. I pulled the pillow over my head. Get out of bed, now, she sounded serious. I pulled the pillow off my face. I opened one eye. Why so early, I whispered. Don't you remember, my mom said. Today's our family reunion. <clears throat> I muttered. I pulled the covers over my head. Let's go, my mom said. She pulled the covers off my head. We're leaving in half an hour. I knew I had to think fast. There was no way I was going to suffer through another Graf family reunion. I, I have to stay home and clean out my closet, I said. Nice try, my mom said with a smile. I cleaned out your closet last week. Um, um, I have to stay home and do laundry, I said. Mom shook her head. She held out a clean pair of shorts and a t-shirt for me to wear. I, I have to stay home and do my math homework, I said. Mom was quiet. It looked like she was thinking about it. Maybe that excuse would work. You can bring your math homework with you, my mom told me. I'm sure Aunt Molly will have a table you can use to work on. Rats. I guess I had no choice but to go. After a very long car ride, we finally arrived at Aunt Molly Graff's house. Most of the Graff family was already there. Oh, look how much you have grown, Aunt Molly said as she gave my right cheek a pinch. Oh, you look just like your father, Aunt Sadie said as she gave my left cheek an even bigger pinch. Oh no, I think you look just like your mother, Aunt Jenny said. I ducked before she could find something else to pinch. There was no way I was going to stand around getting pinched all day. Um, Mom, I said, Homework time. She gave me a nod and I made my move. I went inside to find an empty room. Uncle Stanley was sleeping in the family room, too noisy. My cousins were playing dolls in the living room, too girly. Little Allie was getting her diaper changed in the bedroom, too stinky. I went outside again. Maybe I could find a tree to sit under. Yes, I found a tree. There was shade and there was no one around. I sat down and pulled out my math book. I had to make at least three different graphs. A bar graph, a line graph, a pie graph. What in the world was I going to graph? I lay back on the grass to think. Just then, I heard voices. It sounded like Aunt Molly and Aunt Sadie were arguing. I opened one eye to spy. It's going to be at least 100 degrees today, Aunt Molly said. All my food will spoil. Oh, Molly, you always worry. I don't think we'll break 90 degrees today, Aunt Sadie said. 90 will be just as bad, Aunt Molly shouted. Look at that time. It's only 11 o'clock and it's already 88 degrees. By noon, it'll be 92 for sure. And with that, Aunt Molly stormed away. I bolted up. I had just gotten an idea for my first graph. 
I would chart the temperature and the time. I got to work. I had just started plotting my graph when Aunt Sadie spotted me. Gary, she cried, why are you sitting there all by yourself? Go join the rest of the family. But I, I began. No buts, Aunt Sadie said. This is a party. Now go join the fun. Shoo shoo. I got going. I didn't get very far before Aunt Molly caught me. She did not look happy. Gary, she said, it's time to eat. I looked at my watch. It was not lunchtime. But it's too early for lunch, I said. Well, we all have to start eating now, Aunt Molly said. It's going to be a hot one today, and I don't want my food to spoil. I did not want to argue with her. Then she grabbed me. Oh no, I thought, here comes another pinch. Instead of a pinch, Aunt Molly just pulled me close and whispered in my ear, be sure to try some of my homemade potato salad. It's better than Aunt Sadie's coleslaw. She bought it at the store. I wasn't hungry, but I had another idea. When no one was looking, I slipped under the salad table. I pulled out some paper and some sharpened pencils. I waited and I watched. Five aunts took the potato salad. So did my mom. Six cousins took the macaroni salad. So did three uncles and my dad. And two aunts, four cousins, and eight uncles piled their plates with coleslaw. My grandma and my grandpa took some too. I waited a while longer, but there were no more takers. My bar graph was done. The coleslaw was the clear favorite. I would make sure not to tell Aunt Molly. My stomach started to growl. I looked at my watch. It was one o'clock. My stomach would have to wait. I raced over to the thermometer. It read 93 degrees. I marked the temperature on my graph. I walked over to the food tables. I piled my plate high. I picked up a knife and a fork, but there weren't any napkins. I looked around at my family. A few people had napkins, but most didn't. I got another idea for a graph. I quickly ate my lunch. Then I started to walk around with my notebook. I counted 10 people using napkins. I counted 13 people using their sleeves. I counted 22 people using the back of their hands. Yuck but at least another graph was done. As I looked around for something else to do, a girl came up to me. She had red hair and blue eyes. Hi, she said, I'm Becky. I think we're related. Of course we are, I told her. That's why we're all here. Do you wanna play? Becky asked me. I looked at my watch. It was two o'clock. Sorry, I told her, I have things to do. I walked over to the thermometer. It read 95 degrees. I made a mark on my graph. When I was done, I looked up. Becky was standing there. A boy was standing next to her. He looked just like her. Same hair, same eyes, same height. This is my brother, Bobby, Becky told me. We are twins. I can see that, I said. Wanna play? Bobby asked. Sorry, I said. I have work to do. I started to walk away. Becky and Bobby followed me. What kind of work? Becky wanted to know. I told them about my math homework. I thought they would be bored by it and leave me alone. I was wrong. Cool, said Becky. We love math, said Bobby. Can we help? This reunion is pretty boring. 
I guess, I said, but only if you can think of something to graph. How about hair color? Becky asked. I think there are more redheads here than anything else. I thought a minute, then I handed Becky and Bobby some paper. Okay, I said. Becky, you count the people with red hair. Bobby, you do brown. I'll do blonde and other. Other? Becky and Bobby said together. You'll see, I said with a smile. Now, shoo shoo! Yikes! I was starting to sound like Aunt Sadie. We met up a little while later. Bobby had counted people with brown hair. Becky had counted people with red hair. And I counted people with blonde hair and people with no hair. Oh, so that was the other, Bobby said. I thought the other was going to be gray hair, Becky said. I looked around. There were no people with gray hair. That's strange, I said. There are some old people here, but no one has gray hair. You're right, Bobby said. Maybe if we get a real close we get real close to them, we can find out their real real hair color, Becky suggested. Just then, two more kids walked up to us. Hi, I'm Sally, and this is my brother Sammy. What are you guys doing? I filled them in on my math project. Cool, said Sally. Super cool, said Sammy. Cool. That reminded me that I had to check the temperature. I excused myself and made another mark on my graph. As I was heading back, my cousins were nowhere in sight. I looked around. Bobby was giving Aunt Jenny a kiss. Becky was giving Aunt Sadie a hug. Sally was sitting on Uncle Max's lap. And Sammy was letting Aunt Molly give him a pinch. We now had four gray-haired people. I fixed my data. My graphs were done. Time to go home, Gary, my mom called. So soon, I asked. My mom gave me a strange look. You mean you had fun, she asked. I smiled. I said goodbye to my cousins. We made plans to see one another soon. This family reunion wasn't so bad after all. Plus, I got my math homework done. The end. And again, this book was called Family Reunion. So let's go ahead and discuss.